boom, we are live. Two and a half Oyajis back. Uh, we've been aspiring to do this monthly, but I think we kind of like just got sidetracked during March. So um, here we are, and we are going to keep doing this monthly. But yeah, how are you doing, Victor? We're also old, so, you know, health problems all the time. Memory. Well, um, uh, I'll yeah, confess, general. I'll confess <laughs> the most ridiculous thing. Um, did I tell you about the 20, 20 kilogram best? 20 kil kilogram best? What's that about? Oh, okay. <laughs> disappearing into the into the city there you're sort of being dimensionally transported is that like a bulletproof vest yeah so it looks like it's a 20 kilogram vest oh geez and i uh i read about like one of those long story short, sympathy things long story short i started wearing that every day for 10 days straight and i did not realize it would compact my lumbar Mm. And then okay. I had extreme pain in my in left back. Buttocks. No, 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 my left buttocks. Buttocks. Yeah, not in no, my, my, my muscle, the buttocks. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I realize, not the anus, the muscles around. Yeah, I wasn't saying that it gave you a sore anus. I would say you, it's probably not the vest, but yeah. And, uh, and my left, right, front shin. Oh, the shin, you know. And I thought it was muscular because I've yeah. been also been doing overhead presses um yeah quite successful. i've been doing really well in the gym but then i i couldn't walk for like three days and then after a week it was of continued pain i just realized i use chat gtp gpt just, yeah chat what's it G, gtp gpt gpt oh, i was good at it chat yeah. gpt okay uh yeah. and i just typed in what i said what uh lumbars would be would cause uh a uh a uh pinched nerve to cause a pain in your left buttock and your uh, left shin and they said um uh, chat gpt they said <laughs> yeah l4 l5 then i went on youtube looked for l4 l5 stretches to relieve us uh, uh, i can never say this word say sciatica sciatica yeah you yeah know what sciatica is? i've heard it sciatica but i couldn't tell you what it means in this moment what does it mean again is when your your muscle your your lumbar your discs are squeezing on a nerve in your backbone yeah causing extreme pain or um numbness in your fingers or legs or whatever yeah you've never had it yet because you're young but well relatively but yeah <laughs> well i started I, I had it because i had motorcycle motorcycle accidents and it screwed up my back so you know right so right 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 um but it, it cured it i found some exercise and i was fine much better now so chat GPT, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two videos, yeah. Well, you know, like, so, I mean, um, well, one, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that your, uh, that your, your weight vest hurt your bum. Well, I'm fine now. I'm, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it's better. When I, when I, when I was, um, you know, uh, was joke diagnosed as having cancer in America and was told to wait a month before I could ask any questions about it. Yeah. Um, you know that was that was an anxious couple of weeks and all i had was these technical jargony sort of things and told right. see a cancer specialist as soon as possible right. and nothing to go on so after like a week i just fed all of my medical notes into chat gpt and said be a doctor and tell me what the hell all of this means in layman's terms mm -hmm. and it did it it did it and i could have a and i could have a conversation i could say so you know based on this what's a prognosis and what are the types of treatment that might be necessary and what's the worst and what's the best mm -hmm. and you know it was conservative it well it didn't it, you know it was always it, obviously it's trained to not give people like oh you know you have whatever but all i wanted was a conversation about it and i couldn't really talk with anyone about it because it was scary as hell and it wasn't like confirmed that i hadn't talked to a doctor yet Right. So, you know, um, for me, ChatGPT, just as a way of being able to understand all these medical notes and these mm -hmm. images and stuff, it was like therapy. I mean, like I say, it didn't really necessarily, it educated me a little bit, but just being able to figure it out with mm -hmm. someone who wasn't a real human that I could sort of do it with, that was kind of a big deal. I actually, I subscribed like, to pay for like, ChatGPT. Oh, really? Oh, how uh, is that? Yeah. Well, I subscribed to pay, to pay for ChatGPT after that. After that, I decided even if I never use it again, I'm so grateful for this thing existing. I'm just going to pay twenty dollars a month. What's the difference? I have always wondered about that. When you pay for it, yeah, I don't actually know. I think I think it gives you. I think you can you can choose a more powerful model. And why would you ever choose a less powerful model? 
Another thing, I don't know if you get this in free mode, but one thing that I do, in fact, what I was doing just now was I use ChatGPT, like it remembers the conversations that you have with it. Right. So for example, I can give it my to-do list and I can give it all the things I have to do and I can ask it, hey, can you can you prioritize this for me? And I can uh -huh. go away for a week and I can come back and say, hey, okay, here's all the things I've done. Here's all the new things, update my list. Right, and I right. can do that. Another thing I was doing just before we joined today was I was playing Fortnite and I loaded all of the, the challenge quests in Fortnite into ChatGPT. And while I'm playing, I'm telling ChatGPT what missions I've done and it's recommending which missions I should do next, like to be most efficient. It's like my, my, my navigator co-pilot. Uh -huh. So because it can remember the conversations, I can update it with stuff like that. So paying for it's really, really good. That's okay. So what is it? 20 bucks a month? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like this translation is amazing. It's I mean it can do anything. Yeah, programs with it. I, um, I was listening, of course, to Freakonomics about uh, a month ago, and they had a they had the CEO perplexity. Have you heard of that? No. Perplexity but, I mean, competition yeah. of chat GDP, but the difference is it's, it it can search the internet uh, in real time. Okay. Yeah. So Bing it's a does that bit faster, and it's the results are a little bit faster. So I've been playing with uh, Gemini by Google. Oh, yeah. Yep. At GPT and um, perplexity. I prefer perplexity for news. It gives you stuff yep. faster than no, it's up to date. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, ChatGPT isn't up to the current week's quest. It's only got the quest up to two weeks ago, which is great. I mean, it used to be months behind. Now it's only a couple of weeks. But yeah, you're right. So a real time thing is bit, is good for that. But we should so do a show just on AI because I think that's a, that's something I just. Oh, we could. I mean, so I've asked it write me a program that I can do to use this translation service or something like that, and it writes me a program, and I plug it in and upload it, and it works. You know, wow. like it, it it lets me do things I could have never imagined doing like on my own without paying for help. Right. right. So it's it's crazy. Well, you're saying that sometimes paying for it is better than true love. <laughs> sometimes paying for it can lead to true love. Uh, <laughs> so well, yeah well that my that's my health update and your your shoulder seems to be better my shoulder's good uh my health is good i finished i don't know if i told you i was doing this three month yeah, health challenge thing no no the what the what i did this sort of diet health challenge thing where i stopped eating like sugar and carbs for like three weeks or well, three months uh -huh. three months uh, oh, three really? months and Jesus. i just finished it so i've been slightly overdoing about? sugar and carbs but um yeah. you feel? is it worth it so I did it because on the Kenko Shindan, I'm always losing on the, the dad bod, like fat around the stomach measurement on the metabol measurement, even though I'm, I'm hitting everything else, the weight that, you know, all, all my numbers are good, except the dad bod stomach fat. I just wanted to get rid of it. Mm. So someone told me, oh, if you do this, you'll totally do that. And I was like, that sounds like you're selling something, but screw it. I'll try it. I'll try anything. We'll see if, see if it makes a difference. So I tried it and it works scary well. Like um, when, when you completely eliminate sugar for a few weeks, like your body goes into this ketosis thing, which I've been learning about, which it just sends a signal, like get rid of fat. <laughs> and my body fat went from 16% to 12% in like wow. a few weeks. So I'm like ripped right now. I mean, I, I've lost a bit of weight, which I now I'm trying to put back on. And I don't want to look like you know, a bodybuilder or anything like that. I like having fat on top, but yeah, it freaking worked. It worked scarily too well, and so now I'm trying to go back a little bit to normal. But um, yeah, it I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad to go back to having coffee and stuff and getting off all these restrictions. But it, it worked really well. I want to toast to your health by doing by showing to you something I've never done before. What's that? Whiskey, <laughs> whiskey in a cardboard carton. Thirty-seven percent. Only the finest. I've been waiting I mean, to. I mean, you know, they used to they used to laugh at Japanese whiskey, like, uh, and now they sell it for hundreds of dollars. I mean, this could be this could be an investment. Maybe you should keep the plastic cap on that. Probably two years from now, that could be like, you know, yeah, fifty dollars a, a mini cup. This is Gee, fifty so, much. In the apocalypse, this would be very valuable. Let's try. <laughs> uh, Aaron is asking, is that orange juice or whiskey? It's both. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> um, it's sweet. It's only thirty-seven percent. I'm used to forty percent or more, but. Um, it's fine. Have you been off alcohol? So when, when you say you've been done, like, hmm? you, you've been off alcohol, or, or 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 this is just new that it's in a carton? No, but this is the last for the. I'm I'm taking a break in April. So. Okay. This oh, April. Time. Geez. So you you are one and a half hours away from taking a break for a month. Exactly. So um, by the way, happy Easter. I uh, guess. I mean, I, it makes me feel like going nailing people to crosses, you know, just uh, it's that time of year, just make merry, you know, celebrate crucifixions. And, or just and, nailing and, uh, people. It, 
It's an objectively strange holiday, and of course, we don't celebrate it here in Japan. I don't. Do, yeah. you, do you miss Easter? Do you Not think it's all. weird that I don't like, miss Easter either? I get I get told Japan's weird. Why doesn't it have Easter? I'm like, why in the hell would we have Easter? <laughs> <laughs> but what's weird is Japanese people will tell me, "Hey, happy Easter," <laughs> or they tell me happy Easter and happy Thanksgiving. I'm like, I don't celebrate either of those anymore. You know? Yeah, I and, only celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. Is that really? <laughs> It exists. It's like a month before, I think, uh, American Thanksgiving. I feel bad for the Canadians having a holiday with the same name in so Belfogon. It's um, it's worth 15 bucks. It's fine. It's quite a bit of whiskey. 1.8 liters, man. Well, like I say, I think you should hold on to that. I think it'll be an investment if the cardboard container doesn't rot. Yeah. 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 Um, Eric, Quinn, print... Quinn Rankin, we, we should pay attention to some of the comments. Quinn Rankin is saying there is a fairly large Christian population. I don't know percentages. It's not small. Some parts of Japan, like Kyushu, have a big Christian population. And traditionally, you know, like for going back centuries, like Nagasaki and those places. I don't know. It was about 5 or 10% probably maximum. It's in a, if, if that much, I would, say, I would say it's pretty small. But there are churches everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And of yeah. course, all weddings are Christian. <laughs> Well, the old joke about Japanese that they're, uh, they're what is it, they're, they're born Shinto, they go to the Shinto shrine and they do the Shichigo-san and stuff at Shinto shrines. Right. They're married Christian and they right. die Buddhist. Buddhist, right. <laughs> but my, um, here's something interesting. My wife's boss, mm. it must have been five years ago now, he was dying. Yeah. And right before he died, I knew him. I, I taught at his company, actually. I was hired to uh, yeah. teach his company. That's how my wife got the job with very useful on all things of YouTube. But anyway, right before he died, he called a, a, a Christian priest and converted from like, Buddhism days to before dying because he was afraid that he wouldn't get into heaven. He was, he was hedging his bets. You know? I mean, he should have called a priest, a rabbi, and uh, you know, he should have called all of them, you know, <laughs> just yeah. just spread, spread all of his bits. He, yeah. so I mean, can you even do that? Like, the, do you convert? Does one convert from Buddhism to Christian? I don't think Buddhism cares if you, I think you pay enough, nobody cares. It's oh, all yeah, money. That's right. It's all yeah. money. Yeah. We, Buddhists too, you have to pay for these good luck charms of hanging. We, I, I can't show you, but there's one. Well, maybe I can show you. There's yeah. one, I think, I can show you by switching over my camera. Hold on. Uh, how do I do that? Camera settings. Watch this. I'm gonna, I've, I've never done this before, but uh, well, here we go. Oh, switching over to your iPhone right? camera. Okay, there we go. Switching there. You see, you oh. see that? That's my iPhone. Yeah, I, yeah it's a good image. Me? You see that mat? You see that thing hanging on the wall? Yeah, I see that. That, that is a. That, oh, I'll just get up the real close right there. That right there is a thing that we picked up at a Buddhist shrine, mm -hmm. um, and we pick up. We pay for it every year. We pay about thirty bucks every year. Yeah. And they make those for us, and we hang them up in the houses on certain. I guess that's. Uh, hanging so, up for Easter. First direction east west. I don't know what the rule is, but. Yeah. Yeah. Towards I Jamaica, think, I think. Yeah, but there's yeah. one. There's there, there's some downstairs. We have we have a three story house. There's one downstairs, one up here. Third floor is nothing because just um, there's nobody up, nobody who sleeps up there. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, so these yeah. are like Buddhist omamori that you hang up yeah. around the house. Yeah. And we got to go mean, and pay for them. Yeah. You, you got to pay the shrine if it's like, um, you know, for the for the um, uh, obon and stuff like that. For the people who look after the cemeteries, whatever you look at, you, yeah. you pay those fellows. But normally, yeah. the the donations that's more of a Shinto thing that you have, like the the the, the protective. This, is, this one's Buddhist. Sorry, yeah, this is Buddhist. Yeah, but this is Buddhist. That's a little bit more unusual. That's actually, I mean, that that that's proper proper Buddhist actually. Well, you know, all those, all the religions need money to survive. So tax free, of course, you know. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in fact, I was up in a department store today, just going around. Uh, I think it was. Tobu. I was on the roof of the Tobu building in Ikebukuro Station, and um, on the rooftop garden, at the far end of the garden, at the far end of the building, sort of hidden away in the corner, is of course a jinja, is a shrine. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know about this. You've been here Just forever, right? Top? You said on the rooftop. On the rooftop of a department store in the far a corner oh, is wow. a jinja, is a tori, is a is a, is, a, is, a, is the Japanese gate. And you know the story with that, right? Are you sure it's there just to so to prevent people from peeing? uh that's probably part of it but um no it's that um it's, it's a thing you go into all these office buildings and all these places that have these weird little uh, shinto shrines like embedded in them it's a tax thing it's a tax break you get lower uh, land taxes if your building has a shrine on it so you just go and pay the shinto association they'll they'll, they'll bless a little tori that you put in your building and you pay less tax wow so, that's yeah yeah I mean, you know, they could have put up an Episcopalian church, but uh, I think a tori is probably less maintenance. So there you go. 
Yeah, and you don't have to deal with uh, annoying Christians. Right? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, you want to say hello to some of the people who are... Yeah, there's tons of people in here, tons of comments. So we, we, let, let me run through. We've got DJ Sunny side up, Andrea Moboya, Tai Nakamura. Oh, yeah, DJ Sunny side up, cool. Yeah, Kerberos yeah. Tenshi, Sadiq mm -hmm. Hakan Guris, another man, another Florida man uh, Ooh, really? is in here. Kerberos Tenshi, we've got uh, from Germany, from Finland, we've got Steve Miller. Give us oh, the boom. Steve, Steve Miller, congratulations again. Did you tell everyone the news? Uh, yeah, I think, well, you know what? I don't know that I, that I mentioned it on the show, but um, yeah. The voice of America, you. Yes, um, but he. Um, he got he an got award, a... right? No, no he, he, he was he made was... the director of Voice of America. Yes, yes he's yeah. the director now. So this is amazing. This guy started with us back in the day, fifteen years yeah. ago. On YouTube. He was like the Korea version of us. He was just a U he uh, just he was a YouTuber talking about news and just yeah. doing an interesting everyday talk show. And he has an amazing voice, by the way. And he's an amazing presenter. He's a natural talent. And yes. he got sort of scouted by Voice of America. Hey, come and bring that. The, the, those soothing uh, vocal tones to the news across the, the free world spreading democracy for Voice of America, which he went and did, and he did that for a few years, and now he's like in charge and running the whole, like, yeah. he, I joked that he became the Voice of America, he became the presenter, actual voice, Voice of America, yeah, actual voice of America. but now he's like the actual Voice of America, like, he's actually the company now, he's actually to like, um, yeah. yeah, so. That's just amazing and great for him, so congratulations yeah. to Steve Miller if you're still here. <laughs> yeah, Oops. yeah. I mean, you talk about YouTubers making it, I, I, you know, and that was always the direction he was sort of like, you could tell aspiring to, he was trying to do mm. a professional sort of show. Yeah, and a, then, few, a few YouTubers have actually made it, that's great. Laura yeah. Musio got a, got a job back in Japan, congratulations. Yeah, welcome back to Japan. Is she, is she back yet? Is she actually uh, back? Yeah, she's back in Japan. Oh, um, great, great, okay. Marcos Fernandez, I know Marcos Fernandez, I actually met him last week uh, for the first time. He's from Portugal. I know he's, him too. Why he's like a... Know? He's like a big AI guy. He, he, he makes AI apps and does AI art and stuff like that. So I we started talking about ChatGPT. Yeah, we've talked quite a few times, I think, back back in the yeah. day, though. Yeah. No, he's he's the man on that stuff. Seriously, like when I talk with him, he's he's amazing, uh, particularly with AI art and stuff like that. Maybe it's we like should get him on the show. I'd love to get him on. He, he Yeah, he's fascinating to talk. If you want to do an AI show, he is the best yeah, person probably that I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Slake Manson, who uh, took me out for pizza in Seattle. Uh, good, good to see you in the chat. Yoni, uh, back in Japan from Finland. Uh, Moi, um, good to see you. Um, so um, we got uh, Simon the Tonema. Who's from Finland? Uh, that, that is Yoni, spelled J-O-N-I. S-U-S-I. J-O-N-I. What's no, S-U-S-I? No, no, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm telling you something. S-U-S-I is a, apparently a Finnish word. That yep. means uh, courage, and it's all. It's currently on Amazon. Dot on Amazon Prime. Yep. It's a movie. Okay. And Finish it's full. Of action. It's full of action. It's really fun. I just watched it today. I highly recommend it. It's really good, like Quentin Tarantino type of. Wow. Really, really wild action movie, killing Nazis and stuff. Check it out, wow. Susie. Susie, yeah. okay. Finnish oh, movie recommendation. You never see a Finnish movie, right? It's a Finnish movie. You never no, see it. I associate Scandinavian movies of being kind of like boring crime thrillers or no, something like that. It's hilarious and violent. <laughs> okay. Of, Yoni, uh, tell us if you endorse the recommendation of Susie on Amazon. I've, I've got Amazon, so I can watch it on that. So there you go. Susie apparently is an un untranslatable uh, word that is. Uh, see, oh, I'm sorry, Sisu. Sisu. Thanks, Adako. Oh, Sisu. <laughs> oh, just corrected. Sisu. Yes, yeah. um, and I just watched it, and it's great. It's also on Unix. I watched it on Unix, and then I was told later that it's for it's for free on Amazon Prime. But I actually paid for it. <laughs> what the yeah. hell? But I enjoyed Fre it. Frito song from Brazil. Hey, long time no see. Good to yeah. see Frito song. Wow, Sashi Yeah, great to see Fred. Como vai? Um, we got who else we got in here? We got um, I, I'm probably skipping over people. We got Simon on channel. I mentioned before. Yeah, uh, we got Thomas Morris, who is from Philadelphia, also known as America, the world's safest city. No. A little known fact about Philadelphia. Um, That's not true. The friendliest people on the safest streets. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been to Philadelphia many, many a times. <laughs> well, maybe it's changed. You know. Well, and you're still alive, aren't you? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Eric Bailey, good to see you. Uh, he's dangerous. <laughs> wow. Uh, sciatica sucks. He had it from a tumor pressing on his yes. spine. Couldn't walk for years. So that is a thing. It can be pretty bad. you got to really take care of it. Uh, and yeah. basically, a lot of people get it when they get older, especially yeah. if you're active. 
uh, Erin, who, by the way, has moderated privileges on my channel, so she's oh, keeping sure. she's keeping the mob in line here. Uh, she is uh, on here reminding everyone to like, and uh, good to see you she, early up in the morning. She's got a rug rat my age, age of one of my kids. So. Yeah. Uh, Marcos Fernandez saying uh, yoga is good for sciatica, so there's a, there's a thing. Maybe do some yoga. Yeah. Um, I'm doing well with these stretches I'm doing. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, 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 you know what? There's so many comments already. I'm, I'm going to fly through this. We have Dr. Ocho who's coming to Japan. He's asking for travel tips, which maybe people can help in the comments there as well. Don't waste um, your time with Nagoya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, no. You got a lot of time. It's a great city, but there's other places to say. Yeah, trying to buy Shinkan Sin tickets. He's saying that it's not taking his foreign credit card. That's possible. Possibly you have to buy it in Japan. Maybe they're trying to stop, um, you know, yeah. Chinese gangsters trying to jam up the system or something like that. But, um, but yeah. yeah. So anyway, I am going to come back up. Let's go back to it. So yeah, you've got, oh, wait a minute, Yoni, Sisu. Yeah, he he corrected it. And uh, so did Adako-chan. Oh, good to see you, Adako-chan. We've got Aaron Lucero Nostrand. Good to see. Where are you boys heading to Roppongi for a casual Sunday night rager? Well, Victor is in Nagoya and I'm mm. in Tokyo. And when and Victor, unfortunately, will never, if you have to come to Tokyo, you're still gonna, it's gonna take you weeks and weeks and months of hitchhiking. Because Shizuoka Prefecture continues to uh, prohibit the building of the maglev train between Nagoya and Tokyo. Are they, still, are they still being a pain in the ass about that? They're still blocking it. They're still refusing to cooperate. And it just came through today that the plan to have it start running, to have this train that would basically get from Tokyo to Nagoya. And what was the time? Like 40 minutes. So it would allow people to escape from Nagoya to Tokyo in record time. Uh, and yet... Um, it's it's apparently not going to be now. If they if they continue to work from now, it would take until twenty thirty four. And Shizuoka governors said, "Yeah, screw those guys. We're going to block it all the way." They're becoming like Okinawa with the military bases on this thing. They they are refusing to allow the maglev to go through their prefecture. Mm. So I don't know. Screw you, Shizuoka. I, I want to ride the fast train. Mm. Hey, uh, we 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 got to get into the news. Thomas Moore says hello. I, I, uh, great to see you again. Um, yeah. From the safest city in the world. Yeah. You know, by the way, Atomic Tom, uh, Yoni knows Sisu and uh, cor corrected the spelling. Mm -hmm. um, pronounced the Japanese way, Shisu. Oh, so it's pronounced as Shisu. Shisu, right. Erin's okay. looking for communists in the chat, by the way, and she will shoot them if she finds them. Assume, Thank you for that. I Protecting assume democracy. that you talked last week about uh, Otani. Otani, yeah, about last week, but was before the press conference where it right. was sort of like, and everyone sort of thought, oh, this sounds like the political scandal where he's just making the, the translator take the fall for his gambling. Yeah, and yeah. I, ex I expressed uh, skepticism. I think he's kind of won everyone over with his press conference. Yes. And of, there's been more anecdotes that a lot of these sort of sports stars who, you know, have never looked after their finances before, trust advisors to, with their bank account yes. access and stuff like that. There was a guy on Reddit who came on and uh, I think he made a video. I, I just read the headline, but he said, as a as a translator, let me tell you, this is pretty common. I, I yeah. walk around with checkbooks and credit cards in my pockets. I saw that. I saw that. So it seems like there's more people diving in um, to speak up for him and say, no, it, it, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it does actually happen that people do trust, yeah. blindly trust. And it's yeah. and he's saying that he genuinely was, you know, like uh, taken aback. So, yeah, it seems maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. Maybe he's not a politician. The problem is this sort of thing happens with politicians so often, right? Every politician caught with their hand in the piggy bank doing corruption blames it on their secretary, and the secretary goes to jail, and it's a pattern that happens so many times. I thought maybe with Otani, but now I've changed this week. I think this week maybe – and plus he's playing really well at baseball, so of course nobody wants him to get arrested. Um, yeah, so, it's like he's, he's not worried about anything. He's playing so well, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But – but did you see, have you ever seen the Mizuhara translate for him, interpret for him? You know what? I don't follow baseball that closely, so I don't think I have. I, okay. Have you? I have you either, but the new guy, you saw the new news conference, right? Uh, I saw a clip of it, yeah, and it was kind of crappy translation, but yeah. Yeah, it was. It was crappy. I actually, I did my version. I, yeah. I, I paused and, and translated for myself and, and, and during a class. During yeah. a class. I have a high-level student, and so we did that. And then we also used AI to listen to it and translate it. And AI yeah. did the, the best job, except AI had got tr uh, got confused with pronouns. Like he kept saying, saying, instead of saying you or him or I, he was just saying you, you, you. Well, that's because um, Japanese doesn't have pronouns, which is right. a, a, a better thing. All these pronoun debates, Japan just got rid of them all and we're all better off for it. <laughs> so, no yeah. pronouns. <laughs> what are your pronouns? We don't, we're not Japanese. Yeah, don't fuck your pronouns. <laughs> this is Japan. <laughs> but what was interesting is I went back and watched Mizuhara's uh, 
trans, uh, interpretations from years ago. He is great. He's really, really good. He yeah. sits and he just listens and then he just spits it out and his tone uh, matches uh, Otani. He, he yeah. knows his character. So so you you're, you really feel like you're listening to Otani. But this new guy, uh, Thrill, I think it's Will the Thrill is his nickname. Will he the takes Thrill? And then he kind of spits <laughs> wow, I should get a nickname like that. Pico the Thrill. <laughs> Yeah, so it was interesting. It was a good, um, it was a good English lesson uh, and a good Japanese lesson too. So yeah. I learned a little bit. But, um, well, but it's a uh, hard job. But at the same time, you think there's basically you know, of the, of the people who who wouldn't want to be Otani's personal translator if you could translate, right? Like you you could pick the best translators in the world, and they've got a guy who can't string sentences together. So yeah, I can't I, tell you why I know this because I know someone personally, and they and it's kind of off limits. Um, yeah. the, tell specifics but i do know uh, uh a translator who used to work for a japanese baseball player yeah and the average and then i and I, then i looked it up after this but the average salary of these translators is about fifty five thousand dollars a year yeah not not 4.9 million no right but <laughs> tiny's translator was making five hundred thousand dollars a year four four hundred to five hundred thousand because there of many there aren't many translators getting that much money. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody. And of course, and he, and stupidly, he still had to gamble. <laughs> he, I mean, he already hit the jackpot with that job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe he would have been better behaved if they paid him less. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's a, it's a lesson for everybody, but damn, I mean, you talk about sort of a dream job. Uh, what is your, what? Have you talked to Japanese about him and asked them what they thought about it? Not really. Um, maybe maybe two weeks ago. Not recently, but before that, I was sort of like, "Oh, that that's the story is sus, right? That he must. It sounds mm. like someone's taking the fall." And everyone else is like, "Yeah, I sure hope that isn't the case." But everyone sort of was thinking the same way. But I, I think everyone's kind of come around the last week. But I haven't really talked about that. So the people, well, of course, it's subjective, so not really uh, scientifically valid. But most of the people I talked to thought, "No, he he's innocent. He didn't do anything." Yeah. He's fine. I'm sure he didn't do it. I'm sure it was him. And they kept saying, and Mizuhara has, uh, he has an addiction. Yeah, he has a problem. Yeah. He has gambling addiction. Right. And they were just repeating what they saw and they heard in the media. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, for, I don't know. I mean, what, what, what do we know here? But I'm glad he's playing good baseball. He doesn't seem to be phased by it. And I hope yeah. that they find out what actually happened and, and, and do what has to be done. But um, yeah, it's, if he was really taken advantage of like that, that's, that's a shame. Yeah, I'm rooting for him. I hope he does well. Yeah. I hope it just comes out of this clean. But anyway, so the, bit, the big story this week, which is the first one you said to me, and maybe you can explain this. I'm happy to explain it, but you explain um, this um, Benny Koji, this ready yeast health well, supplement. What's, what's happening? <laughs> what is that like? Ozempic? What, what's the <laughs> what's it supposed to do? Help you lose it's, weight? Uh, it's a cholesterol reducing health supplement, but. Well, it's self-certified, so the go you know it's not tested by anyone or verified by anyone. The government allows general uh, health supplements that make general, non-specific health claims to just companies just self-certify. So it's never been scrutinized, but they just sell it. Kobayashi Seiyaku just sells this thing as you take it and it helps you reduce cholesterol. So does Japan have a, a FDA? Uh, it has a health ministry, which, you know, does certify if you actually release a medicine or you make like a specific health claim, like this will cure cancer, then it has to go through a government certification. But if you just say, oh, this is just good for your health, um, you can just self-certify. Oh, hmm. okay. When I first heard, heard about it, I thought it was some kind of hair supplement. <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why. Really? Maybe oh, I should try it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm listening to it on NHK News. Um, Would it give me like red hair? I, I, I don't know how that works. But this is what I don't know. It's it said it said it's a, a red a yeast dye or something. Red yeast, a red cool. yeast rice, red yeast rice. I don't even know so what a yeast rice is. Koji, Koji King, Koji are like the yeast bacteria that they oh, use Benny for breaking. Rice, right, I, I'm sorry. sorry. Benny must be rice. No, Benny's red. Benny's like the the oh, red. Right. If you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Benny, Benny. So no, the rice, the, the when, when you make sake, sake, you make sake by basically getting water, yeast, and, and rice. And the, the yeast breaks down the rice, and it brings out all of the, the sugars, which convert into alcohol over time. So right. yes, if you brew um, beer or, um, or, 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 or sake, you add yeast to it in order for it to brew. And this is the same as that yeast, which you might add to beer. It's a specific red type of yeast, which okay. they find out on its own is meant to be healthy. 
The problem is not the yeast. The problem is apparently there was a batch of this yeast that they were converting into tablets that was contaminated with some kind of toxic, like a uh, you know, parasite sort of uh, bacteria got into the yeast. And apparently it causes your kidneys to like shut down more or less. And all these people died of horrible sort of kidney illnesses. So, you know, kind of, kind of scary. I think like five people died, 18 people hospitalized last I heard a couple days ago. Yeah. Might, might have gone up. That's yeah, yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. And and, say, I've got to do one thing. Uh, sorry. A quick thing at home. Uh, our, dun, 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 dun. Uh, You're being loud. Dun, 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 dun. I'm being, uh, I did a deal with my son. That I've given him extra screen time today. So boom, okay. which I just did. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, but so all these people are dying, but not only that, so it's mostly so as a, oh, give me a sec, give me a sec. Sure. Yeah, it's apparently a dietary supplement that can lower uh, your cholesterol, something called levastin or something. Yeah, but um, they, um, it's not only that, apparently um, they also supply it to like 148 other products that use it uh, in other supplements and they use it sometimes just as like a food dye or so it's like in all sorts of things, you know, uh, and they can't even trace like which products it's in. So, you might, you know, you might have had something that just had a red that was like used as a natural dye. So, yeah, lots of people are getting this sort of uh, basically toxic poisonous stuff. And the government's basically, as a result, that what NHK is saying that the government's maybe they shouldn't be just allowing companies to, un, you know, unsupervised say that this is a health right. product and make it without any oversight, which is what they're doing with this. So yeah, um, it's kind of I guess it's, that's our biggest story this week, maybe. Right? Sorry, uh, that's okay. definitely well that that and the whole political uh, shenanigans and the budget being passed and so on. But that's the main regular news story, definitely. Oh, I never follow those. <laughs> yeah, so you know, um, so of stuff that we would follow, yeah, uh, that's the biggest story. People are dying from this thing. Okay. Uh, mostly elderly people. The sort of people who would take cholesterol tablets and whatever are the ones who are who are, who are ending up in hospital with a uh, kidney failure. Mm. All right. Well, um, well, I, I, I can did... go through my Twitter. What else have you found that I th you you had some topics well, that that you thought were interesting? Oh, I was this is something well. I, I just heard about today, and I thought I thought this was pretty bad. Late night restaurant fees. Some restaurants in Japan are implementing a surcharge for customers dining between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Well, I kind of get that. Well, one, most shops do close around 10. It's pretty because the trains stop after like 11. And I think right. also you have to pay uh, labor laws. You actually have to pay like a surcharge overtime for people who work after 10 p.m. Mm. You have to pay like a 50% extra time. So it's something at companies, a mild company, like the IT company, people would work all night. So they actually turn off all the power <laughs> so that people don't work in the office so that they can uh, deny paying them uh, for time after 10 p.m. Because the, 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 they started auditing the time hours and making you pay plus 50%. So I think it does make sense that if you're open 24 hours and you have to pay your staff more during that time, that you would increase the charge. I can see a rationale, but it's a, it's a bit silly to do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, places like Sukiya. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's like a McDonald's, you know. It's a really low-level place. You would think they would just uh, average out the cost, right? Probably. But yeah, I mean, I mean but there again, look, I, I, am, I am glad that we don't have this BS tipping culture that these people are suffering or whatever. And, and, all, you know, that, that you're sort of guilted into these people not having a living wage. Good so point. I'm, you know what, if, if, if this is what it costs to pay people properly for the food, like time and a, you know, they have to get paid time and a half and they, they, they translate that into high fees. That makes sense. I'm good with that. You know, just char charge me for the food and whatever, and I'll pay it. If I want to, if I want to have a sandwich at one o'clock in the morning, well, uh, you were so you remember how incredibly expensive it is to eat out. Um, yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, just just regularly, you know, the and the fact that they they hide the tax and, and and the tips. So if they display, even the display prices are expensive, like thirty dollars for a lunch. But yeah. then on top of that, you got to pay, you know, twenty thirty percent tax and twenty, you know, now nowadays twenty five thirty percent tip. Yeah. And you know, as much as they plead poverty. I'm like, seriously, what are the, well, you know, I, <laughs> I think they're getting paid a lot better in restaurants in America than they're getting paid in Japan. And oh, definitely. paying these ridiculous tips. That is definitely true. Yeah. So I, I've always said, just, just tell me what to pay. I don't want to guess or calculate or be guilted for paying a low tip or anything like that. Just put it all yeah. in the price and just put it on the menu and tell me it's going to cost me $45 or $50. Don't, don't lie to me and say it's going to cost $30 mm. and shake me down, you know, um, 
But yeah, so that's what I like about Japan. You see the price that you pay and you pay. Mm. This is not really Japanese related, but someone, Thomas Morris just mentioned just now that I hear Sam Sam uh, Bankman Fried is going to start a crypto grocery in jail. <laughs> yeah, call. So, no. Coffeezilla, Coffeezilla calls him saying, uh, Sam Bankrupt Fraud. <laughs> Which fits very well. He got 25 years. Yeah, although he's probably only going to do like what about five months or something. But yeah, yeah, he, he oh, sent us uh, to twenty five years. Well, I don't I, know. He'll, 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 he won't do twenty five years, I'm sure. But apparently, he sense... his uh, his victims were really pissed off about that. But I'm thinking, that's a lot of time, man. Twenty five years, and he didn't really like. He didn't. It wasn't a violent crime. It was a it was a white collar crime. So usually, so, you know, they get ten years, fifteen years, whatever. But oh, twenty five years is a lot to me. But they were um, they were quite unhappy with that. White collar America thanks you for your for your support for for lower lower sentences for uh, for, for for them. I don't um, know. I don't think it's it's, it's it's I don't think it's as bad as murder or rape. You know, and th those crimes seem to get less. Well, but you know, if you take, I mean, and there isn't you know there there are arguments here that um, you know what's happened with this. Um, although he stole billions of dollars and spent it on himself and political donations and stuff like that and there's only like 10 percent of that left the um and, and that was all stored in bitcoin the value of bitcoin's gone up like a thousand percent since he was arrested and so now they've said that they can return the amount of money everyone put back in so what should have happened however everybody should have made him a thousand percent on the bitcoin that they were storing on his exchange and he's promising to give them back their original deposits and saying i shouldn't get so much jail time because everyone's going to get their money back but of course what's happening they've missed out on the money they would have made if he hadn't like been stealing money for himself but but in a normal scenario like this where, where, where you've got someone who's trusted and holding money for other people and they're dipping their hand in and spending it on themselves some people ruin their lives like that, right? Like some people put that in where they need that for their retirement. They lose their life savings. They've got medical issues, stuff like that. And when they lose everything, I mean, it's not a violent crime, but you know, a lot of people have their lives ruined by, by like big fraudsters like this. It's kind of fortunate in a way that Bitcoin's done so well. It's going to take away some of the pain, but at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that he, you know, knowingly, fraudulently stole a lot of the money that people are trusting him and believe that he was securely handling in the exchange. So I don't know, it's not violent, but it still messes people's lives up. I mean, some people can, can lose a lot like that. So Yeah, no, you're right. In those cases, I guess I, I guess I can't blame them. But but still, 25 years seems a, a lot versus for, for a crime that's almost like it doesn't even it almost feels like it doesn't exist because it's crypto. Uh, you know what I mean? Scam bankman fraud. Uh, ba bank scam bankruptcy fraud, I think is what uh, Coffeezilla called him. But yeah, yeah, you know, you, you've done well there. Um, and Linksy Project pointing out there are hard limits on sentence reduction in the federal system. Okay, so maybe he really will tw do 25 years. Mm. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, in prison, I mean, in prison, I'm sure he's going to be educating everybody on how to use <laughs> crypto. I mean, I, 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 I'm sure he'll find ways to, to sort of uh, mitigate the time. Plus, his parents are both like law professors or something like that. So oh, um, really? I, I don't believe he's going to do 25 years. But, but no, then, I mean, look, the scale of his crime... Huh? Oh, this, as financial crimes go, I mm -hmm. mean, these are these are the worst financial crimes in American history. The amount of money that he stole and the level of dishonesty. Eleven billion missing. He has yeah. to pay back eleven million. So I don't know. I mean, you know, it's uh, to me twenty five seems seems fair. But um, you know, um, he, and, and look, his his parents are law professors. He, he he and he knew what he was doing was wrong. So you know, I I don't think he's got any argument. Right. Okay. Okay. Well. Still seems a lot to me, but um, yeah, I would have said like 15 years or something, but there's still a lot. <laughs> um, I don't know what the difference is, but yeah. The story I don't know much about. Maybe you know something. Uh, Japan yeah. announced plans to test a system. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the comments so you can highlight it. Yeah, there. yeah. right there. And feel free to share screen as well if you want. But uh, Japan I, announced I, plans to test a system to pre-check. Oh yeah, so the the pre-check for visitors uh, likely as a security measure. So the the, the pre-flight pre-check before you fly in. The, 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 the immigration screening procedure. Mm. So you know what this is. This is the ESTA. Well, as an American, you might not know this, but yeah. everyone flying into America needs to get an ESTA. They need to apply yeah. online for a visa. My wife, and my they, wife. Yeah, and they do a background check of you and check that you're not like a terrorist or anything. And if you check out on the background check, they give you the ESTA. And when you show up a, 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 before you fly, there is a system that they have to log in and confirm and they'll do a second check. And what it means is that the immigration in America isn't there trying to screen every single person in the line arriving in America. They, they, they tell you if there's a problem or there's a flag on you, they'll say you can't fly. Um, and that, I, which I just guess 
does catch people. But there again, I guess it's better to be caught and not leave in the first place than it is to arrive and be stuck in immigration right. detention while they sort it out. So Australia has this, UK has this, Canada has this, America has this, and Japan is implementing the same system. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of people screaming on Twitter that this is uh, this this is some sort of uh, Japan doesn't want foreigners and they're trying right. to discriminate against me. I, I think people don't understand what this is. This is a perfectly yeah. normal system and it should just make arriving more efficient. So, so I, uh, 30 I'm years it. ago, I met a guy who, a Japanese guy, who had been arrested for uh, marijuana. I don't know exactly what the charge was in, in America 30 years ago. And he was put on a list. He could not re-enter America for 10 years. Mm. And he was put on, so he would be someone that would, that Esther would, I guess, would pick up. They find they they find out that they he's, he's probably on some register, right? That, that right. says, oh, this guy this guy's not allowed. So if he tried the Esther thing, it wouldn't work. Oh, Johnny, sorry, Johnny sure. Somali, right? Yeah. No, 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 10, no, no. thirty years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I was distracted by the comments for a moment. Thirty um, years ago, I knew a guy. Yeah. Oh, you who, knew a guy. Sorry. I knew a guy. That, he was he was a, a friend of a friend, and I met him at yeah. met him. He told me, yeah, I love America, but I can't go back for 10 years. I'm like, why? He goes, I caught smoking pot or something or doing something with marijuana. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But he's put on a, 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 he couldn't go back for 10 years. Yeah. So yeah. Esther would weed out people like that and save him the trouble of. By the way, what is happening with Johnny Samal? I heard he was. In oh, sorry. So, so that's where I was distracted for a moment. Uh, some people are commenting that the system being implemented presumably would be the way that they would stop Johnny Somali coming back to Japan. Uh, right. well, theoretically, what, I think. Sorry. Is he out, is he out of the country? I think he's out of the country now. I mean, oh. you know, he was convicted. He They let him go, but he was convicted. So, yeah, um, I think he's left and he's not allowed back again, I think, for 10 years or something when you have a criminal Whoa. conviction. Okay. We're good friends. So same deal as your friend. Um, but this would be the system where, you know, rather than relying on the immigration, uh, you know, the passport discount of people to catch them, mm. which happens, but, you know, the basically it, it, he, he would get, be pre-screened and not allowed in. So it does suck. There are people who do get screened for, you know, reasons when they shouldn't be. Like, for example, they've got a name that sounds like a terrorist or, um, and I, I also know, uh, you know, my, my stepmother was like uh, traveling like every weekend uh, for work around Southeast Asia. And when she went to America, just the fact that she was traveling internationally every week, that creates a flag that has you taken in for a questioning room and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, it's still, it's still those flags are a pain. But um, in the end of the day, I still think if there's something to be sorted out, it's better to sort it out before you travel and, and arrive smoothly. So I agree, I agree. But it, but it puts a burden on the other countries. That's the thing. The other countries have to go do all the work of stopping the people and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. There is something amazing. You remember the story about... Um, uh, what's his name? Kim Yong Sam or something. He was like the son of Kim Jong Il, right, the other he came son. To Tokyo Disneyland, right? Came to Tokyo Disneyland, right. and you remember that the the person at the passport desk um, recognized him. He came in on a on a Dominican Republic passport with his family, and okay. the person just looked at his face and said, "Hey, you're Kim Jong Il's son," and stopped him and took him aside and they ID'd him and they rejected him and they they they, they didn't allow him to enter the country and he left. But someone, you talk about facial recognition, like cameras and AI and technology and stuff like this. This is just a regular Japanese person sitting at a desk who recognized the son of Kim Jong-il trying to come in on a Dominican passport and turn him away and resulted in him being exiled and later murdered. Uh, so it had consequences for the guy. Mm -hmm. But um, kind of amazing, you know, people are amazing. Right? People on those jobs, the fact that just from like facial recognition that you could identify the son of a foreign leader, you know, it was kind of yeah, amazing. I would never, he wasn't like, a famous guy. Yeah, he wasn't at all. Yeah, I remember his picture was in the paper, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it certainly was after the Disney thing, but even before that, he became a bit of a celebrity after that, right? He became this playboy in Macau, and he was kind of popular in Japan, actually. The fact that he no, liked gambling you know and stuff. I'm Kim Jong Un, yeah, the president, the pre the the present president, yes, also did the same thing. Went to Disneyland. His, yeah, went to Disneyland with his father, Tokyo, Tokyo Disneyland. With Kim Jong Il. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a, a picture. His brother went to Disneyland. Are you, are you kidding? Kim Jong-il and Kim oh, yeah. Jong-un both went to Disneyland and Tokyo Incognito? Oh, it's so, I've okay. never heard of that. Okay, already? Uh, um, can like, I share my screen? Yeah. The I fact that the other guy came to Japan uh, and got this? caught trying to go to Disneyland, that like got him exiled. Oh, um, how do I share a screen on this? Uh, just uh, on the bottom of the screen, present. There's a present button on the table on the bottom yeah. of the screen. All right. Let's see if this works. Uh, not now. Okay. Select screen. Okay. 
Now this is from Snopes, so actually I haven't I haven't looked at this yet. <laughs> Can you see that? Okay, did Kim Jong Il and Kim Jong Un once use fake Brazilian passports to go to Disneyland? Yeah. Okay, let's see if it's true. Oh. Let's see. Ready, 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 ready. Going down, going down. Oh, the story goes that where's the where's the we'll just jump to the result, right? Yeah. Uh, an article published in Mandatane, blah blah. Oh, where's the where's the answer? So Kim Jong Nam, Kim Jong Nam was the name I should have used. He was assassinated. He's the guy on the left, by the way. Kim Jong Un uh, is on the right, right? Yeah, that's right. But they're saying that. But so these passports must have been Brazilian passports. But yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. So Kim Jong Il and his future leader use Brazilian passports? No way. I mean, okay, the guy on the left does look like Kim Jong Un, but the guy on the right does not look like Kim Jong Il. No, well, I do not. I do not believe that Kim Jong Il came to Japan and went to Disneyland. I believe it's possible Kim Jong Un did, but okay, and it looks like he got. He might have gotten away with it. But how did they even get this? And his it, older brother, it was on Kim Twitter. Jong Chu. Oh, no, wait a minute. Sorry, just if you go scroll up a little bit. So those passports are Kim Jong-un and another brother. That's another brother, not Kim Jong-il. Yeah, another brother, I guess. I guess. Um, they said North Korean Kim Jong-il and his son, Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-il Jong Jong-un. Okay, but, but look, the guy the, the guy on the left is not Kim Jong-il, so yeah. I don't know. But it's possible. I mean, look, they tried it. Maybe maybe, maybe they came because it worked. So I don't, I've never heard yeah. of that before. So then they tried it again. Oh, uh, multiple occasions. So you there we go. Reported this in 1991. That was right before I came. So may, okay. So maybe this rumor was going around, and that's why the immigration started to recognize the faces because maybe they'd heard these sort of rumors, and everyone was like briefed on lookout for these people. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe they were doing too many Disneyland trips. Okay, I never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. So there Esther would kind of stop them. Stop screen. Kim Jong Il is indeed dead already. Uh, his son now is the president or chairman or whatever you call him of uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Mm. But yeah, the other story that I thought was interesting. Did we talk about this maybe before the show started? A Japanese student. Um, oh, by the way, I looked up. Um, uh, what's his name? I looked up. Uh, Bernie Bernie Madoff. Yeah, yeah, the big Ponzi guy. He got 150 years, so I'm I'm wrong. Oh. 25 years is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta... and he's like 80 years old as well. So so basically, they're just gonna make sure he dies in jail. That's all that they're trying to do. They're trying to make sure there's no chance that you know, moving to 105 and getting out. They're making sure he's gonna be dead. So how many of your coworkers I use AI? AI? How many you of died. my coworkers use AI? I work yeah. at an IT company, so I would say. You know what? Some of them don't because I guess legal people, like back office people, maybe mm -hmm. don't use it all the time. But I would say pretty high. I would guess 80 or 90 percent. Okay. But so do you know what about people who are not in IT? I mean, no idea. Uh, young people, I'd say anyone like below like 35, I would say just about everybody's probably used or regularly uses AI. Well, I, 40? I don't know. People, and I teach a lot of young adults and nobody uses it. Okay, Almost. that's interesting. Yeah, which I think is strange because in America, you know, the, you know, it's been outlawed in a New York public school system. It's been yeah. prohibited. Oh, I've heard about that because, but you know that that this whole thing as well that um, so that when they heard rumors that kids were using it to do their homework, mm -hmm. with smart kids, you should use it to do your homework. Frankly, I mean, it's a, it's it's another tool like Wikipedia or whatever. And then teachers started feeding the reports to ChatGPT and saying, "Did you write this?" And ChatGPT would just respond to every question like, "Oh yeah, I wrote that." And then they started like expelling these kids and giving them fail grades, even though ChatGPT was randomly, well, completely, you know, inaccurately saying that it wrote their reports. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, New York, I think, just decided it was too much trouble to deal with. But also the the idea that teachers immediately just treated this as cheating. Um, mm. So I think New York's just screwed up the way that they're they're doing everything. But yes, I've heard that they banned using. So using. the the um, one of the free economics hosts of one of the shows there wrote an op ed for New York to the uh, New York Times and said they should not ban it, um, supporting that we need to we need to master this uh, tool. Right, it's just a tool. I agree. I mean, it, it's going to come out on top. So. Of course, Fernandez makes our AI guy makes an excellent point. Um, all the people you say who don't use it, they don't know that they're using it. But everyone's using it. It's it's actually already embedded in everything. So yeah. there's that element. You're right. How many people are going to chat GPT and you know knowingly using it? Sure, maybe not many, but but it's already becoming 
embedded of, i mean in this and every and everything right so that's a good point yeah good point um so a japanese student uh book report contest was flagged and uh dropped entries that were found to be <laughs> written using ai anyway some How some japanese didn't find that out there's some no. con just two days ago they mm. caught this kid uh, using chat GT gpt and um Smart i guess kid. more of a huh but again, one I wonder: Did they do what happened in New York? That did, did they just feed it to ChatGPT and say, "Did you write this?" And did ChatGPT just lie and said, "Yeah, that was me." Uh, how did they find out? I don't know. How did they even find out? Like, how can you, I don't know that there's a way that you can actually find out without the person admitting it. I don't mm -hmm. know that there's a way that you can find out something was generated by. Uh, well, I mean, there were, there were his styles. It was bad usually, and then suddenly yeah. he did well. <laughs> that would give it away. <laughs> But even well, then, you can't just you can't just say that the kid plagiarized. I mean, again, the, the, you're right. It can be suspicious that a kid suddenly got better. But but look, if a kid used ChatGPT to help draft, like say they wrote a draft and then they gave it to ChatGPT, like for me, what well, sure. I, I would feel comfortable doing is writing a draft and say, ask ChatGPT, hey, can you tighten up the sentences and make it less, you know, le you know, make, make it sound better? Right. Like use, using ChatGPT as a tool to take, here's my ideas, write a framework that I can improve on, or take my draft and improve it. Like that's a really smart way to use chat gpt yeah. and the idea that that's you you should be encouraging kids to do that frankly if it I, makes I, if completely. It makes I'm, I'm encouraging all my students to use it but they're like they're they're scared of it they don't know what it is you know people are reluctant it. well you're reluctant to use anything you don't understand i mean what impressed me about the story about this uh because this was a japanese language essay right that that, that, yeah. that won this contest or whatever um until now, you know, ChatGPT's all been trained on English material, so it's not as good in foreign languages. And right. Japanese is one of the languages, and this is where the Japanese government's worried that Japan's going to lose out because the English language AIs are so powerful, and there isn't really, and there's less material for Japanese. So if the Japanese material AIs aren't as good, then you know it's going to put Japan at a disadvantage. So the Japanese government is throwing money at AI startups that that will develop Japanese language large uh, LLMs. Um, so the fact that this LLM was good enough that this kid won an essay contest says that, hey, Japan's doing good. I, I don't know. I, I see this as a smart kid and a good yep. LLM, and, and, it, and it's turning out like, like, a, like a, you know, but as a horror story. Person, wouldn't you agree that Japanese is actually more predictable than English? Because of all the set phrases and all this, all, there's always, everything's, everything's kimari monku, everything's all these set expressions here. Yes and no. I mean, there's nuances to Japanese that make it difficult, right? Like there's a prose style and there's a speaking mm. style and there's a lyrical style and there's, you know, honorifics and casual and so on. So you get all those concepts to, to navigate, which from English you can't navigate. That's true. Um, I mean, you're right. I think Jap Japanese is a simpler language. There's much less explained. You, you can say more with fewer words in Japanese. That's true. Right. And Japanese allows for a lot more ambiguity, so that makes it easier. So that's why there are fewer phrases, because you don't have to fill every single detail in like you do in English. So I don't know. I can sort of see that. I, I don't know that Japanese is more limited, though. It is funny. Everybody perceives that their own language is broader. So Jap I've had Japanese taxi drivers. I don't, I don't think me, I just think more predictable. I'm not saying yeah, well, I, I don't know that the language is more predictable. Uh, you might make an argument that Japanese people are more predictable, <laughs> the things that they say. I don't, you know, so I don't think that's a necessarily a linguistic thing. I don't know. I mean, you can express anything, right? I, I I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm not sure that Japanese itself as a language is more predictable. I think when you're Japanese, and of course, I think maybe you'll you'll agree with me on this. Um, when you first come to Japan, you you get you get to your fairly fluent level. Oh and, yeah. And okay, I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the same conversations over and yeah. over. And all the conversations are the same, but after you get past that, you start realizing there are deeper conversations that you've been kept away from, <laughs> or you haven't been able, you haven't been able to understand because of your so, limited. It's Actually, true that cool. I, I compare Japanese, like getting to know Japanese people in those first conversations is like ballroom dancing in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are steps that you, you, you can just practice over and over with people. And while they're complex and they don't make sense, when you learn them, you don't even have to think, right? You can have whole conversations with, with strangers and not use your brain even once. That is true. Yeah. But I think for an essay contest, that's not the type of Japanese that you're using. You know, <laughs> Hello, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm very well. What are your hobbies? Do you like the Four Seasons? I don't think that would be an that would be a, an award winning uh, essay. I think that would I think an AI like conversation bot an AI could be very convincing and do that, and that would be very easy to train. But I don't think that would win an essay competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking with this kid. I don't. I, I, I haven't <laughs> read it. Most, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just like the phrase. So um, I'm I'm thinking. Um, um, 
that huh this kid was probably not that good a student he's a great student he used ai i'm a fan <laughs> that's why he was suspected yeah yeah I mean, isn't that kind of discrimination? Isn't that discrimination? I don't know. I'd give that kid a job. Like, put him in an AI company. Jeez. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I'm, I'm, I, I am not. People ask me, Victor, do you think that the Japanese are worried about losing their jobs because of AI? And I don't think anyone's uh, worried about Japanese it. Japanese don't think like that. Japanese love robots. They love AI. Whenever, whenever there's like AI comes out or robots come out in America, like when they show the, 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 the dancing robots and the, the acrobatic robots in America, everyone on social media and news says, oh, this is slightly terrifying, right? The, the first reaction, even jokingly, people say, oh, this is terrifying. Look at those robots. Japanese are like, kawaii. You know? <laughs> Japanese love, love robots. Those commercials. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, yeah. My kids love those commercials. They, they, yeah. they stop. They stop to watch. Yeah. There is something about the culture in Japan. I've seen. I've seen deep analyses of this, and I don't know how far to go with it. How far I should should believe it. But um, there is this thing that in Western culture, we have this kind of religious, philosophical going back to the Greeks and the the Egyptians and so on that we see humans as sort of separate to nature right it's part it's the foundation of our religions we got kicked out of the garden of eden or whatever and seeing anything that's literally not a human doing something is unnatural by by definition our philosophy our laws everything treats it that way so we treat a robot or automation inherently with suspicion japanese again this is uh, this is kind of a bullshit kind of new magazine like uh, you know the magic of japan kind of thing but i think there is a slight point in this japanese never saw humans as separate to nature right japanese see everything they see this bloody mouse as having a god inside it right everything's got a kami this is why they have all these uh tax tax break shrines all over the place you can literally put a shrine you know on anything in japan so japanese don't feel as like detached from inanimate things japanese can see an inanimate thing and think that that's like a cute thing you know like uh because that's embedded in the religion and the philosophy going back forever and that makes japanese culturally more open to accepting the idea of robots and automation and i definitely see that i don't see the same fear narrative around automation and robots that you see overseas but ironically they throw away everything <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the, the used market here is very small when people are sick of something they don't they don't they don't try to they i mean there is a used store blah blah blah, blah. But people just throw shit away. There's great stuff in the garbage all the time. Well, it's because they want to get more new stuff. You know, it's a, they, yeah. people like stuff. Yeah, but they, so in that, in when it comes to garbage, they don't. They suddenly conveniently forget that those, those things have gone. Well, Japan is Japan's more wasteful than it used to be. But you think about traditional Japanese culture. You know, this idea of oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. traditional Japanese culture stuff would last forever, mm -hmm. and the shokunin's tamashi is supposed to be inside everything that they make, right? And people still think that's an ideal in Japan. The idea that you'd a, a, a shokunin like an artisan or like a robot like Astro Boy, literally Astro Boy, right, has a soul, because, and the soul is of the inventor. The whole the whole animation of Astro Boy or whatever, the whole the whole storyline. Is the basis that these the robots the have personalities? Word, word the Japanese use um, for the soul in things? Tamashi. Everything's got a tamashi, which you know, which 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 we reject. Westerners, you know, bloody bloody Western religion and and whatever, we reject that you can that you can have a soul in a robot, right? In fact, people say, oh, that's soulless. You know, you can't have it take my job. The soulless thing. Japanese think robots have souls. So you know, oh, I thought they were I, I like that. For things, but maybe not. Maybe they just use the same word. Well, I, I think that concept, anyway, it's it's vague, right? It's it's like the force, you know, it flows through us and around us, and it's made of midichlorians. But, you know, Japanese think that everything kind of has some midichlorians in it. So, you know, I hate midichlorians, by the way. I, that is one of the worst things about the prequels, but yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, know, you know about Japanese dolls, right? Uh, what sort of dolls are you referring to, Victor? <laughs> <laughs> now we have a problem of do they have souls? The traditional Japanese dolls that you you see sometimes for um, for Kids Day. Yeah, yeah. The 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 I, in Fukuoka they've got the Hakata Ningyo, which are really famous as ceramic dolls and stuff. And yes, so, I mean they've got all sorts. And when it comes to disposing those, you have to take them to a jinja. Yeah, and have them burned, right? So right. that she can be returned. Like they just did with Colonel Sanders from the Osaka Dotonbori River. You heard about that, right? They just did that, literally. So excellent timing. That was a story in the last week. Wow, really? Okay. Because, yeah. and if you don't do that, they, they're completely freaked out by those dolls. Like they, they think they're the most disgusting things. Yeah.
Yeah. So you heard about the curse of the Colonel, how years ago they threw the Colonel Sanders doll into the Dotonbori River after Hanshin like won a tournament and then they never won again. And when they when the Hanshin won this tournament last year for the first time since the curse of the Colonel, they fished the the, the statue out of the river and they literally gave it like a Shinto ceremony and they burned it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they said the curse is now free. So yes, exactly that. But it's exactly that. They believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Last November, and there was some there was some gaijin guy who helped a woman who fell in the river. Yeah, I mean, I, I think she was a real person, not a doll, but yes. Oh yeah, yeah, no, there's a real a real human being. It I also it, happened jumping in that a, river, man. Bad idea. Yeah. I saw it on your Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're up in an hour. Um, we, I, I don't mind hanging around a bit longer, um, but I will for people asking. Uh, I will I will do a uh, a DJ set for an hour on my after party uh, after this, but um, but I, I'm happy to hang out a bit longer. I'm all having right. fun talking about, uh, I don't know, do, 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 do all dolls have souls? And if they do, does that does that change anything? Yeah, what's going to happen to those, uh, the popular expensive sex dolls apparently that are becoming popular now? So. Yeah. Are they becoming popular now? I don't, I don't know. My, will, um, AI, will, AI, will AI just make that the thing who knows my daughter um was on uh tiktok yeah she's oh. she's, seven, she's seven years old yeah. and there was a video of a girl sitting kneeling in a chair with her mm. ass sticking out and some guys slapping her ass like this yeah and then they pan the camera up and it turns out it's a doll which may or may not make it better or worse i can't, I can't quite tell yet yeah just, huh she just said isn't this funny <laughs> thank you government of china for uh shaping the minds of the future in the west yes yeah. uh, i just said okay yeah it's funny <laughs> let's let's see what's next let's look for cats or something anyway yeah, yeah. we have dentist appointments tomorrow with the kids so i do have to get up early um yeah. uh but it was great seeing you hey and why don't we try to do this every first sunday yeah yeah i mean we kind of cheated this month but sure first uh, april, fools. april fools right tomorrow so yeah yeah, it's, it's, almost, um, it's almost the first. I mean, end or start of the month, and let's just try to keep this going monthly. So, um, yeah, thanks everybody. By the way, the, the chat was great. We didn't, we didn't. Uh, well, as I, I think we, we sort of kept the conversation flowing, but um, thanks everybody. So we got a really great turnout with the comments. It is like like this is on my channel, but I always get double the number of people in the comments when 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 you're on. So well, uh, the next Sunday on. will be a May fifth. May fifth. Which is a Sunday, but it's also a national holiday, I think. So we'll have to play it by ear, I guess. But it looks looks okay to me so far. Yeah. It's Children's Day. Children's Day. Oh, of course. That's right. Kodomonohi. Yeah, you know the old uh what I discovered from my Japanese class that Japan has a has a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, and a Children's Day. And I went home and I said to my I said to my parents, Why why don't we have a children's day? And my parents without a beat responded, because every day is children's day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, thanks for the little thumbs up, by the way. Yeah, intent, yeah. Intent, if you haven't left us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs up before you leave. Indeed. Uh, thank you for the thumbs up. Remember, these videos are not monetized. Um, so this is, uh, Victor's just doing this for, for charity, for, 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 for my, for no, my for likes and thumbs up and peanuts and all that stuff. So yeah, give us, give us the likes. I get to wear my hat, so. Oh, and by the way, before you, I didn't even say the hanami. The hanami, I went to, so I went to the hanami, such as it was. It was a, if, if there is no hana to me, is it a hanami? It's a is it a is it a kimi is it a, just looking at empty trees um but i saw blk unk and a couple of other sort of uh oh, really? How's couple he? old timers he's great and he came back and he was like he misses the community and he thinks that you and i are the only people we were the, the last people holding up the community and he wants us to bring back the community and he wants oh, us wow. to get guests back on and stuff he's like back. that he's back from uh mexico he is he is uh he, apparently that was a whole big incredible drama in fact might be might be fun to get him on yeah hey, he was saying get guests back on and he would love to tell his story as well he's trying to figure out i think he's going to make a movie out of it or something but um well that's great yeah like yeah so um and dan h you didn't have to do that but thank you i will spend it on Thanks, peanuts man. yeah uh, but yeah that's the thing I, I had so many people come up to me and say that you and victor were the ones who had originally you go out find people and introduce them and boost their channels and get them followers and you never expected anything in return and people remember that even 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 now and they were like sure now nowadays the gen z's or whatever they don't really care about that they don't you know they don't do that anymore but they miss that part of youtube and they're like hey get guests back on this like people feel good about that and you know we were the ones who embodied that so it's another thing maybe we do the next show maybe we do start bringing back guests or well, let's talk like to that. him for next time maybe 
Yeah. I didn't even yeah. know he was in, he was in Japan. So yeah, let's talk to him. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, okay. thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go set up. So the stream, uh, I think you can see it on my channel anyway, the after party stream. So I'm yeah, going to take probably two or three minutes to set it up. And you can come keep me company there. I'll take requests and so on. And otherwise, uh, have a good week. Everybody. Thank you, Victor. It's always fun to do two and a half hours. And uh, we'll see all of you again next week for Tokyo Tonight and on Twitter and all the other stuff for everything else. And of course, you know, give me a break, man. But if you don't, make sure you go subscribe to him. Uh, Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace. Yo. Okay, I'm going to end the stream. And extreme.